this is my two cents. I'm sure by now everyone has already seen countless videos and articles about the horrific shooting that took place in Las Vegas this past Sunday. But just in case you haven't, here's a quick clip. At least 58 people now dead, more than 500 people wounded in a horrific shooting on the Las Vegas Strip. It's the deadliest mass shooting in modern United States history. Police say a 64-year-old Nevada man, you see his picture there, named Stephen Paddock, opened fire last night on a country music festival. He opened fire from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel across the street from the concert hall. Police say he was armed with at least 10 rifles from that vantage point. Country music star Jason Aldean was playing for thousands of fans, 22,000 fans, just after 10 p.m. last night, Sunday night, when the gunman began unloading hundreds of rounds into the crowd. A now, predictably, in the wake of this shooting, the left has wasted no time trying to exploit it in order to argue for more gun control. There was Hillary Clinton's tweet, and Richard Dawkins' tweet, and Elizabeth Warren's tweet, and a number of others tweeting out their sentiments for more gun control and how enough is enough. In fact, in an utterly predictable turn of events, some leftists even celebrated the shooting, since they reasoned that there were probably lots of Trump supporters among the dead. It was a country music concert. Disgusting how the far left preaches tolerance and acceptance of everyone. Except if you disagree with us, then we'll shoot you with the very guns we want banned. Now, there have already been a lot of great video responses to this event, that I will, and I'll link some of those in the description, but I would just like to make a quick observation about the Las Vegas shooting and then compare it with a similar event that occurred in 1966. First, well unconfirmed, the video from the concert makes it appear that the shooter used a fully automatic weapon, which means he obtained that weapon illegally. Fully automatic weapons cannot be manufactured without a special permit from the ATF, and the average citizen cannot obtain a permit to own one. Unless, of course, they pay outrageous fees, submit their fingerprints and photograph for an extensive background check, and have all their personal information put into a federal gun registry. To put it in perspective, it would take at least a year to get a permit to purchase a fully automatic weapon from a specially licensed dealer, and that's assuming that the ATF decides that you should be allowed to own one. Therefore, it's safe to say that the shooter either obtained his firearm illegally or he manufactured it on his own, which would itself be a violation of federal law. Second, this shooting was clearly well planned out. The shooter picked a crowded venue of people in a confined area taking place at night and fired from an elevated position outside the concert, avoiding all the security precautions at the concert itself. These were not the actions resulting from frivolous ideations of anger. These were the actions of a mass murderer who, knowing full well that what he was doing was illegal, concocted a detailed plan to ensure as many deaths as possible. Given he was willing to put so much effort into his crime, do you really think he'd have been deterred if it had been impossible for him to buy a firearm legally? You really think he would have said, boy, I really want to murder tons of people, but alas, it's illegal to purchase a firearm. Well, shucks. I guess with all this gun control, you really can't be a murderer these days. Get real. Third, the concert itself was a gun-free zone. We all know how well gun-free zones are at deterring criminal behavior. If you're an entrepreneur, you can turn your small business into a gun-free zone. Give me the money, old man! Ah, but you can't! Come on, give me the money! Look! <laughs> gun-free zone? Damn it. <laughs> so, all this being said, let's consider how this event differed from a shooting that occurred at the University of Texas in 1966. On 1 August 1966, Charles Whitman entered into the administrative building of the University of Texas, located in the city of Austin. Whitman posed as a research assistant and acted like he was making a delivery to make his way to the observation deck of the university tower. Whitman gained control of the tower by brutally bludgeoning the secretary at the observation deck, and after barricading himself in, his killing spree officially began. In the terrible aftermath that ensued, Whitman was able to kill 14 people as well as wound 31 others. Officer Martinez, who was instrumental in putting an end to the massacre, later said the following, I was and am still upset that more recognition has not been given to the citizens who pulled out their hunting rifles and returned the sniper's fire. The city of Austin and the state of Texas should be forever thankful and grateful to them because of the many lives they saved that day. The sniper did a lot of damage when he could fire freely, but when the armed citizens began to return fire, the sniper had to take cover. 
Bill Helmer, who was a graduate student at the time of the shooting and recalled the following about seeing several citizens grab rifles and return fire at the shooter. I remember thinking, all we need is a bunch of idiots running around with rifles, but what they did turned out to be brilliant. Once he could no longer lean over the edge and fire, he was much more limited in what he could do. He had to shoot through those drain spouts, or he had to pop up real fast and then dive down again. That's why he did most of his damage in the first 20 minutes. So when this shooter started firing, something happened. A bunch of angry Texans started pulling rifles from their trucks and returning fire on his position. Granted, they didn't kill him, but they did force him to take cover and saved numerous other lives that would have been taken had no one returned fire. Gotta love Texas. So I'd like you to consider what might have happened had this situation in Las Vegas been a little bit different. Suppose the people in Las Vegas, residents and tourists alike, were all heavily armed. As the shooter traveled to Vegas, imagine he saw people carrying weapons everywhere he went. When he reached his hotel, he saw that the staff was armed, and as the guests went in and out, they were armed as well. He knew that the people at the concert were armed and that the people on the street outside his hotel were armed. In fact, what if he knew the people staying in the rooms on either side of him were armed and could potentially respond to his shooting within seconds of him beginning? You think maybe this might have deterred him from doing what he did? I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. It would be more likely to deter him than passing laws against owning and carrying firearms legally so that he could guarantee most people wouldn't be responding to what he did. That's my two cents. Take it for what it's worth. Thanks everyone for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. You can also hit the bell to ensure you're notified every time I upload a new video. Also, if you like my channel, please consider becoming a patron so I can ensure that I have the time and resources to keep putting out content. Check out the video link in the description to see what kinds of rewards I offer for becoming a patron. You can also follow me on Twitter, Minds.com, Vidme, and WordPress. Uploads are every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so stay tuned for more videos.